this is a very beautiful proof of this uh, theorem. It, sa it says for any field F, does it need to be the complexes? Uh, if you have uh, an operator T, so T, T is just a linear operator on some finite dimensional vector space. Then there exists a monic polynomial. Monic means the leading coefficient equals to 1. There's a monic polynomial such that P of the operator is the zero operator. It has the smallest possible degree and it's unique. Unique in the sense that if there's another one which also has the smallest possible degree, it has to be the same. So let's go to the proof. First, we know that dimension of the space of linear maps, of linear operators on V, is finite. Since it's finite, as we take identity, then T, then T composed with T, which we call T squared, and we keep going, eventually th this collection can no longer be linearly independent. Okay? So let us M be the largest M for which this uh, collection is linearly independent, the largest possible. Being largest possible means exactly that when we add M plus 1 here to the collection, then it is no longer linearly independent, it's linearly dependent, and it's linearly dependent exactly because Tm plus 1 will be in the span of the previous ones. Okay, so Tm plus 1 can be written as a linear combination of the previous ones. And because the previous ones are linearly independent, it can be written in a unique way as a linear combination of them. And therefore, there exist unique coefficients, a0, a1, a2, pa, 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 all the way up to am, such that this operator here is the zero operator. Okay? If we put minus in front of t and put it here, is just saying minus t is being written in a unique way as this combination of identity t, t squared, pa, 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 up to t to the m. Unique, okay? there are unique such coefficients. Right? So if we write, define the polynomial p to be the polynomial that has this form using the same coefficients that we got before, Okay, but now with a little t as just some the variable of the polynomial that does not need to be an operator. This polynomial, first it has degree m plus 1, it has p of t is 0, it's monic, monic me means the coefficient here is 1, and it's the unique polynomial with this property, being monic degree m plus 1 and p of t equals 0. And why is it the unique one? Well, because if there is another one which has degree m plus 1 and which is monic, then necessarily it has coefficients 0 here, 1 here, in front of t m plus 1, which means this 1 that we have here. And we already know that the other coefficients will have to be unique, because these, there is no other way to get the 0 here. So we found the unique monic polynomial of degree, degree m plus 1. Now, in order to say that this is the smallest degree, we just need to show that any polynomial with smallest deg with smaller degree, smaller than m plus 1, which is also monic, cannot satisfy this condition here, the condition of p of t being 0. Well, why is that true? If we take another polynomial with degree smaller than m plus 1 and such that p of t equals 0, what does it mean? It means there is a polynomial here, not including this term, such that this linear combination of operators give us the zero operator. But these operators, they are linearly independent. So the only way of this linear combination to be zero is that all coefficients are zero. Which means if there is another polynomial with degree strictly smaller than m plus 1, with this property, 
all the coefficients are zero. So P must be the zero polynomial. And the zero polynomial is not monic. And that ends the proof.